as we celebrate the birth of our risen Savior and the significance in that, that his life gives us hope, his perfect, holy life, uh, born of a virgin, the word became flesh. And I'll read a few select passages from John, but because he was born and walked this earth, and because of what he did later on, I won't spoil it for you if you haven't gotten that far in the book yet. Um, because of Christ, we have hope today. John 1.1 1, 1 says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. John 1.14, The Word became flesh and made His dwelling among us. We have seen His glory, the glory of the one and only Son, who came from the Father, full of grace and truth.
son. The virgin will conceive and give to birth a son, and will call him Emmanuel. For unto us a child is born, to us a son is given. And the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Oh, mm -hmm. 
Yahweh, the God of your ancestors, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, has sent me to you. This is my name forever. And this is my title for all generations. The Jews were so afraid to say this name in fear of taking it in vain that they came up with another word that translated into English is the word Lord. And throughout the Old Testament, the majority of the times when you come across the word Lord in the Old Testament, it is usually the name Yahweh. Especially if in your Bible the word Lord is a unique or different fault. This was done out of fear of taking God's name in vain. What's so interesting about the name is the way it is expressed in the Hebrew language. It also goes to the past. I was who I was. As well as the present. I am who I am. As well as the future. I will be who I will be. And the verb form of I am is simply means to be. God's name for himself. Oh, it can go much deeper than that. But just to move it forward and to get why I bring that up, let us move to the New Testament. In the Gospel according to Matthew, where the angel of the Lord comes to a young man named Joseph. Joseph has been up all night. He's troubled. His wife is with child, and he knows it is not his. The scripture says that Joseph was a righteous man, and he was unwilling to expose Mary to public disgrace. So he planned to get rid of her, or as scripture says, to miss, dismiss her quietly. But just as he had resolved to do this, he had the revelation of the angel of the Lord come to him. And that's the where I pick up this passage of scripture in chapter 1 in Matthew's gospel. Verse 21, where the angel of the Lord is talking to Joseph and says to him, Your fiance Mary, she will bear a son. And you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. I don't know if any of you know this or not, but in the original languages of those times, the word Jesus, interpreted back to the Hebrew language, means Yahweh saves. So I guess this is maybe the second time in all of Scripture where God names himself. Only this time he does it through an angel. And he talks about himself becoming in human form for the first time in history. And instead of using his own name, he almost uses like a junior or a second. Instead of saying Yahweh, it's Yahweh saves. And isn't that exactly what Jesus did in his words and in his deeds. The third most common phraseology of the name of Christmas comes to us from the Gospel according to Luke. And in this version of the birth story, this is where the angel comes to Mary. And of course, Mary is a quite perplexed young lady, probably a very young teenager. Most girls in that time in history were, were given in marriage at about the age of 13 or 14. Finds herself pregnant. And of course, wonders what her future will be. It is while she is going through this perplexing thought and worry that she also has a revelation of an angel. 
And in Luke 135, in the angel's conversation with Mary, the angel says to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be holy, and he will be called the Son of God. I suppose, in a sense, we are all a son of God or a daughter of God. We all come from his creating, Adam and Eve. But in Jesus' case, there's a uniqueness here. Because Jesus did not evolve from humankind and history. He came into history. Didn't have a typical father like you and I, but did have a typical mother. And he truly is the son of God. And of course, all throughout the New Testament, he refers to himself that way, as well as to the, as a son of man. And of course, those who worshipped him and followed him also saw his uniqueness and specialness. And thought an appropriate title and name for him was the Son of God. <coughs> a fourth name, going back to the Gospel according to Matthew, at the very end of that first chapter, right after the story of the angel's appearance to Joseph, Matthew puts his own little twist in there in verses 22 and 23 of his first chapter, where he says, all this took place to fulfill what was spoken by the Lord through the prophet Isaiah. And then he quotes Isaiah chapter 7. Look, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. God is not only with us, but He is in us. And God was especially with Jesus as He began His ministry and healed the sick and gave sight to the blind, changed water into wine, fed the 5,000, and also has the ability to live within our hearts and spirits like never before. Emmanuel, God with us. Probably the deepest meaning name for the name of Christmas comes to us from the Gospel according to John. The very verses that Glenn shared with you as we began our worship service today. The first four verses of John's Gospel. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through Him, and without Him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in Him is life, and that life was the light to all people. And then just to skip to verse 14. And that word became flesh and lived among us. And we have seen God's glory. The glory as a father's only son. Full of grace and of truth. The Greek word for word is a word called logos. L-O-G-O-S. And in the Greek culture, and you might remember there were some great philosophers in the Greek culture, Aristotle, Plato, many others, who talked about the logos of life. It was the reasoning behind creation. It was the order of creation, its forming, its meaning. And this concept of the word of life, the logos of life, is also found in Indian religions, Egyptian religions, Persian religions, as well as throughout all philosophies. I first 
reading John's Gospel, thought about how God created and how God didn't wave his hands or do some kind of abracadabra, but God simply spoke, let there be light. And there was light. The Word. Let us make humankind in our own image. And humankind came into being. The logos of life. The Word of God. The most common ways we know of Jesus is we refer to Him as Jesus Christ or Jesus the Messiah. These two words are actually the same word in different languages. Messiah is the word for Christ in Hebrew. And Christ is the word for Messiah in Greek. Both words mean anointed. As being the one who is anointed, along with that concept of being Christ or Messiah, comes the concepts of Savior. Redeemer, reconciled, the one appointed by God to do God's work. Jesus, before his baptism by his cousin John, was simply known as Jesus the Na of Nazareth. And even when Jesus was placed on the cross, the chief priest and the elders of the Jewish community referred to him as Jesus of Nazareth, as well as Pointus Pilate from the Roman tradition. It was after his resurrection and ascension that he became known as Jesus Christ, or Jesus the Messiah, the name of Christmas. Now see, that was my priority because after that the list got pretty messy. Also in the New Testament you can find the Lamb of God, the Great Shepherd, the Rock, the Fortress, the Cornerstone, the Foundation, the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning of all things as well as the end, the Bread from Heaven, Living Water, True Vine, Light of the world, pioneer and perfecter of the faith. And those ten titles I just read to you are just scratching the surface of names that were applied to this person who Christmas is named after. I bring these names to you today here, brothers and sisters, as a way of trying to amplify the gifts that you have received from our God in heaven through His Son. You have received one who is with us, one who saves us, one who, although is the Son of God, is also right here. Who is the Logos, the Word of life, the Savior, the Redeemer, the Reconciler, the Anointed One, the Christ, the Messiah, as well as the Sacrificial Lamb and the Keeper of the Sheep and the Rock and the Fortress when the storms of this world come, the Alpha, the Omega, the bread from heaven, the living water, the true vine, the light of the world, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. Oh, you can add to that the great prophet and many, many other names. And all these names are the name of Christmas. It's where the tradition started and why it started. I hope as you gather around with your family and your loved ones on this Friday that you can not only open the presents under the tree, but that you can also open the presents 
that came on that O holiest of night and from God's Son, our Savior. 